fun and we're live good morning good afternoon and good evening depending on wherever you are in the world today for this session of zero to freedom we're gonna have a very 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 special guest who is the eight figure coach chris crowley who's gonna present us how to publish a best-selling book for more impact more influence and more income. So if you were thinking about writing your book, something very interesting, I've just realized that it's not that different from actually preparing your online program, but we have Chris Crowley here, who's gonna drop some golden nuggets on how you can do this. So welcome, Chris, very happy to have you here. Thanks, Bruno, excited to be here. So exciting, thank you for having me. Thank you, thank you for, thank you for joining us today. So. Absolutely. I guess the top question that people have right now when they see our post is, what does it take to write a book and publish it? Well, it doesn't take as much as people think it does, right? So um, we've been doing this since 1998. And, um, and I learned the business from uh, Dean Graziosi. Um, I did some infomercials with him way back in the day, um, some real estate stuff in his studio. And um, I learned the process of, I, you know, because I always thought back in the day, I was like, I'd love to write a book, but, you know, it would probably take me six months and cost me all this money and this time and all these things. And I had all these excuses. And I went to do an infomercial and Dean said, uh, Dean's team, everyone's like, okay, we're going to write a book and we're going to sell it for $24.95 on TV. And inside the book, we're going to drive into our back end offer that we're going to sell for 10,000. We had a 10,000 offer and a 25,000 offer. And this was like 20 plus years ago, right? Long time ago. Um, and I thought, well, how are we going to write a book? Like I'm only here for like a few days. And he's like, yeah, we're going to, we're going to speak the book and then we're going to transcribe it. And then we're going to edit it. And then we're going to print it in one day and we're going to publish it. And we're going to, we're going to sell it on TV. And I was like, okay, <laughs> wow. Sounds amazing. Um, and we did, and we did, we actually did just that. So it took us about a week. I had a book and I was selling it for $24.95 on late night TV and infomercials all across the world. And, um, and we led inside of that book, we led it to a back end coaching program. And so, uh, that, that sold for 10 to $25,000. So we made millions of dollars doing that, got tons and tons of leads. And from that process, I thought, you know, what if I could teach my clients this process? Because we had tons of coaches, consultants, entrepreneurs, my same clients that are my clients today, kind of saying, you know, I need more clients. I need to be the authority in my niche. I need more credibility. But what does it take? So we kind of took that process that we learned um, and sort of tuned it over the years and um, have really perfected it um, to the tune of, you know, we've published thousands of books now for entrepreneurs, coaches, and consultants. And it's really this simple. It comes down to literally, so what we do is we sit down with our clients and we map out a table of contents, like a really detailed table of contents tied to their pain points and the outcome that people are going to get, the result, the transformation, the outcome, much like you would do if you're a coach, consultant, or entrepreneur. It's like, what are the pain points of the people that I'm serving? And then what's the outcome or result or transformation that I'm going to provide to them, right? So we map out a table of contents based on that. And obviously, um, taking away that like Russell Brunson's one big, you know, your one funnel away or one big idea, or what's the one big thing. We always ask ourselves, what's the one big thing? Like, why are you writing this book? What's the one big thing it's going to do for somebody? Why should, should someone read your book? And we center that table of contents around the pain points, the transformation, and the one big idea. Um, it's really, really granular. The more granular, the better. We put what stories we're going to tell. Stories are great. Facts tell, stories sell. Stories are amazing. They make people relate. If they relate, they engage. If they engage, they get to the end of the book, right? So um, we map out this table of contents and we, we set a two day, um, it's two times to record, uh, about two hours each. So we get about four hours of audio. We transcribe that audio, we edit it. Um, and we, when you're editing, when you're, when you're talking, when you're speaking audio, it's different than when you're writing, right? When we write, we tend to like, oh, erase that or take that away, whatever. When we're speaking, it actually is better, but it requires a really, really thorough edit. Like if you were doing this on your own, I wouldn't suggest you use, you wouldn't edit your own book, right? You would hire a professional. We use developmental editors in our company. So it's a developmental edit. 
um, very thorough edit. Um, and then we format it for print. We design an award-winning cover with some great copy, book copy description, get our ISBN, Library of Congress, and we're off to the races. And then it's all about the marketing, right? But really wow. that process, we've done it, the fastest we've ever done it is nine days. Um, nine days. Just nine yeah, days. I, I just, <laughs> I have to nine days from an idea, people. literally nine days from, hey, yeah. this is an idea to bestseller. So wow. um, yeah, we... We don't, um, we don't put that out there. I'll tell you, tell you why mm -hmm. we normally say 60 to 90. And the reason we say that is, is because when someone records a book and they get it back, they get back the messy transcript, right? And they're looking at it before it's edited. People are perfectionists. We want to put our best foot forward. We want it to be the best book it can be. Um, and a lot of times people kind of sit on that for a bit, right? They sit on that, um, that the ideas and they, uh, we say, Hey, if you want to make any changes, but they, they usually keep it a while longer. Or if we give them back their cover, a bunch of cover concepts, it takes them a while to choose and to pick. And, you know, so usually the average person takes around 60 days, right? Because it's like the going and back and forth. But if you if we were to say, hey, give us this, give us this, give us this, and we had everything we needed, we could do it really that fast. So it's pretty crazy. It is. It's crazy and it's impressive because I believe that the average people that I speak with when we're talking about writing the book, they're thinking at least one year. So the fact that you mentioned that it's doable in nine days or in, in, in an average of 30, Even 30 60, days, 60 days, 90 days. Yeah, people, exactly. and you know, in the average, uh, the, in the normal publishing world, you know, the, the, the larger publishing houses, we're more of a boutique publisher, but the larger publishers, publishing houses, if they sign you on for a book, you're looking at 18 months to three years. So that's, that's how long it normally. So I think that's why people have that perception. Um, I also think people, one of the biggest limiting beliefs I see is that they think they have to like lock themselves in a cabin in North Dakota for six months to write a book. You know what I mean? It's like, you don't have to do that. Um, it's not that hard, but the, but the basis of it, the ideas and the framework and the structure, I think is what, like we help our clients develop that. Cause then if you have that, it's almost like a good analogy would be like, if you had a 10 chapter book, it'd be like doing a 20 minute Ted talk on 10 chapters. You know what I mean? So that's kind of like, like, if you think of it like that, it's like, that's not so hard. Right. Absolutely. Because just right. to break it down, basically now you're saying that to write a book, it literally takes 10 slots of 20 minutes where you're basically talking out your book and mm -hmm. having an editor that, you know, listen to that, put it in words and have your book ready. Yes. And they're not really, it's not a ghostwriter, but it's not just an editor that's going to go through and do line by line punctuation, grammar and spelling edits either. You know, the developmental edits, and it costs us about $6,000 to pay an editor to do that. Um, that's mm. expensive. But we we cover that inside of our fees. But I'm just saying it's an expensive edit. But but it's not someone writing your book. You don't want. I mean, you could have someone ghostwrite your book. But most of the time, like in our industry, people are coaches, consultants, entrepreneurs. They have a very specific um, way to do things, right? So if someone yeah. ghostwrites your book, they don't know your framework. They don't know your exactly. Product. So it's better to get your ideas out of your head onto paper, and then let the person who could can ghostwrite if they need to but they're doing more of a developmental, a heavy developmental edit to make it great, to make it flow, to make it not choppy, to make it read well, to make readers engage, you know? So, absolutely. Um, yeah, so that's the one big takeaway. Do not edit your own book. If you're gonna record it, audio, that's the fastest way for sure. And we, like I said, we've had people do it nine days is the quickest we've done it. And that was including two days of marketing into bestseller. So it was really about a week process. So it can be done. Um, but the editing is the biggest thing, you know, and that's, that was a, a, Hey, can you work round the clock editor job, by the way, whatever it takes to Absolutely. get this book done. Um, but it's, but it's incredible what's possible. And then that book, you know, I also don't think Bruno that people realize the, the benefits that come with the book, because the benefits are obviously it brings you clients. It brings you a plethora of clients. Okay. Um, but the reason for that is, is it's, it brings a lot of credibility. It brings authority. It makes you the go-to authority in that niche or industry, right? It brings, it brings credibility, it brings authority. It brings, um, I mean, if someone's going to choose somebody to, to help them solve a problem and this guy over here has a best-selling book or 
international bestselling book or Wall Street Journal USA Today bestselling book over this guy. It's like, they're probably going to pick the guy who's, you know, they're like, well, this guy must know a thing or two. He's on Wall Street Journal USA Today. It also brings a lot of media opportunities, a lot of podcast invites, um, a lot of growth for your business. So that's the real reason. And, and anybody who writes a book in this day and age in 2022 and beyond, I truly feel like if you're writing a nonfiction book, um, a million percent, you need some sort of call to action. You need to drive them to inside of the book. We're driving our reader to the back of our end of our business, consulting, coaching, product, service, whatever it may be. So that's the biggest thing. That's super important. And not a lot of people do that. I see some great books that are phenomenal, that are well-known names, zero call to action in the back end. No funnel, no nothing. They just have a, um, a, a website, like their, their main branded website that doesn't even collect names and emails. That's a mistake. <laughs> That's a missing opportunity. That's a huge missing opportunity. Because yeah. based on what you said, basically, a uh, book is, it could be like the biggest lead magnet that you can put out there. It is. It is the biggest lead magnet. You think running ads or doing organic traffic, we do all of those things. We do Facebook ads, YouTube ads, Instagram ads, TikTok ads, Snapchat ads, all of it. LinkedIn, organic marketing, social media posts, chat messenger marketing, all these things. The book surpasses all of that so and it just brings Love in leads that. every day and when it's done correctly like in our company we build out the back-end funnel so we build out the client the book we help them publish the book we market it to bestseller and we build out the back end of the funnel because the funnel is the important piece the book is going to drive to the funnel where we're going to capture all the names and emails and we're going to build a big list that we can market to and monetize that's why i mean that's a you're writing it for impact and influence okay great but let's let's not deny the fact that the income is you know a nice thing. Also, absolutely, right? Yeah, absolutely. But the income isn't the front end. The, the royalties on a book are are. I mean, it's great. Okay, it's it's okay, right? But it's not going to make you millions of dollars. It's not going to get you a two two comic club award, right? On a book, you have to sell a whole lot of twenty dollar books to to make a million dollars a year. However, if you have a back end ten thousand dollar offer, okay, now we need a hundred clients. You know what I mean? A exactly. hundred sales, that's it. So if you have a $20,000 for now, we need 50 clients. If you have a, a $50,000 offer, now we need 20 clients. It's not that hard. We kind of reverse, look at the end and have the end in mind starting and reverse engineer back to what you want. Exactly. So it looks like it could be the perfect initial for your value ladder, like starting with a $20 book. So people know you, they trust you, they see you like the go to authority then upsell you know either the online program for two three thousand or the actually high ticket program for like five ten thousand right yes and you could have yes you have the twenty dollar paperback book but you could also have the the 99 cent kindle book we have tons of clients who leave their kindle versions the digital versions of their book at 99 cents and they use it as a lead magnet best lead magnet ever i had one client just recently left his book at 99 cents and within six weeks, had 35,000 leads. Wow. So it's a big deal, especially it when is, you think absolutely. about it. Well, and it's on Amazon. It's on Google. It's on um, Apple Books. It's on Barnes & Noble. I mean, it's on all these, out, you know, the Kobo, Rakuten. It's on all these outlets, right? And so you're getting free traffic from there. And inside of the book, we're driving into a back-end funnel that, that collects names, emails. We give some free gifts. Um, and it's, it's a strategy we've repeated literally hundreds and hundreds of times every year. Um, and it works like clockwork every time. So it's pretty amazing. It is. And let's talk about one thing, because I think what people are skeptical about now is becoming a best selling book. So sure. what do you think is needed to actually become one of the best selling books? Well, we, first of all, like we don't take on every author. We don't take on all books. If we don't believe we can market it to bestseller in the beginning, um, we don't do it, right? So we get a lot of people that will come and say, I want to write a, a cookbook, a barbecue cookbook. We're like, eh, we don't do that, right? So we'll refer them to someone who can help. Or I want to write just my life story. We don't do that either, right? So if there's, if it's certain kinds of books, like we only really do nonfiction but we've gotten really good at nonfiction. And I'm not saying fiction books or cookbooks can't be bestsellers, but that's not my expertise, right? 
However, I will tell you this, if a book has got good content, like we review all of our content, we do a lot of quality. Um, we do an interview up front with authors to make sure it's something valid. We do a va idea validation. I, we do this process where we validate the idea to make sure that people already want it. So you're not publishing a book that people don't really want, right? So we're looking at that up front. A lot of people kind of skip that phase and then they get this book and they try to sell it and they're like, oh, nobody wants it. Didn't do their idea, val their, the validation piece in the beginning. But I will tell you, if it's a good book and good content and it has a good audience um, in terms of the subject matter and the content and a good title, good cover, all of the things that you need for a best-selling book, we guarantee, like for us, we guarantee that anybody we publish that we, if we take your, if we say yes, we'll take your book project on, we guarantee it'll be a bestseller because we know because we take it through this step, this process of like the idea validation. Um, we think of the look at the idea, the title. Some people don't even know what their title is going to be, but we want to know what's it going to be about. Who are you serving? What's the big thing that people are going to get from this book? What's the big takeaway? What title ideas do they have? What subtitle ideas? And do we think we can do that? And if it's something that's a really good idea and has a market, right? Somebody who, people who are already searching for this book or this concept or this idea, we will take it on and we market it to bestseller. Marketing to bestseller, anybody, any book that has like the things I just said can be a bestseller. I mean, we wouldn't say, hey, we're, we're going to guarantee it hundred percent if we didn't do it. And we've done it every single time. We've hit it every single time. Wow. Um, it's, it's not a matter of, it's not a matter of, um, can it be a bestseller? Or can it not? If you, if you, it's been validated and there's an, there's an audience for it, it's just a marketing process, Bruno. I mean, we use a funnel to do that. Obviously, um, we use paid ads to do that as well. And then we use an email list for marketing as well. Um, we also do some other things like some zoom launch parties and, um, you know, get some reviews from friends and, uh, not friends and family, but friends and like, um, people on social media, they're people that they're, they're, they're uh, yeah. following getting yeah. reviews, helping boost the clients up. So things like that. So that that's the process, but, but it's not a hard process. It's a marketing process. So a lot of people are good authors, but they're not good at paid ads or good at email marketing or, mm -hmm. or good at those things. Um, so if you were doing it on your own, I would hire, event, I would say hire somebody who's experienced in doing it in bestseller marketing and bestseller marketing can come in multiple, you know, there's, there's Amazon bestseller, there's Barnes and Noble bestseller, there's Wall Street Journal bestseller, there's USA Today bestseller. Now, a lot of times people will say, oh, I'm going to pay someone to do the New York Times for me. And I'll just tell you, if anybody ever tells you that, that you can pay to become a New York Times bestseller, it's a scam. It's lying. Yeah, yeah it's lying. Yeah. And it's Wall Street Journal and USA Today and Amazon uh, and Barnes and Noble are based on sales and they're based on sales within a specific time frame. Okay. New York Times is based on a team of editor an editorial team calling the shots. So there's mm -hmm. seven people that say this is yes, you're going to make it or no, they're not right. So it's basically like a vote because we've surpassed. Yeah. We've had books, Bruno, that have beat out people like Bill Gates, Michelle Obama, Matthew McConaughey. Like our books wow. beat that, and we hit Wall Street Journal, we hit USA Today, we hit Barnes and Noble. Last week we did a book. We got number one on all of Barnes and Noble, number two on Wall Street Journal. We were on the USA Today bestselling list. We hit number uh, number one in five categories on Amazon. We hit all of these things. Um, Brian Tracy did the forward to the book. It was a great book. Didn't hit New York Times, but got invited on the, the Today Show in New York. I mean, lots of other things can come from it, but that just goes to show you can't guarantee the New York Times bestseller list. You can market your butt off and hope, um, but it's a vote. It's, it's a team of people saying yes or no. So, but the others doing Wall Street USA Today, um, how we guarantee it is we just market it till it hits. So we basically Absolutely. do it. We, we just go, we, we market till it hits. And it's just a matter of book sales. So it takes anywhere between, well, it's different for every, for Amazon, it depends on the categorization and the BISAC codes. For uh, Barnes and Noble, same thing. For USA Today and, um, and um, Wall Street Journal, you're looking at anywhere from three to 12,000 books in a six day period. So in a that's six day period. We do our marketing campaigns from Monday to Saturday. And that's when, wow. and then the following week, USA Today and um, Wall Street announced the, the winner, the who, who, who made the list basically, but it's just based on sales. So if we don't hit it, like on, if we start marketing on Sunday or Monday, 
and we haven't hit it by Tuesday. We just pushed really hard Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And there's been a couple sure times. Yeah, there's been a couple times over the years where we've had to redo it the following week. Um, but usually within a, a you know one to two weeks max, we've hit bestseller um, all over the place, and and it's great. The person comes out of it with podcast interviews and invites on more media interviews. I mean, it's it's a great thing. A book is a great a great marketing tool, and that's exactly what it is. It's a marketing tool. Absolutely, exactly. and the fact that you give this guarantee as well. It makes it almost a no-brainer for people who want to grow their authority because they have the guarantee that they're going to hit the best sellers in some of those platforms. So that's really, really powerful. It's an asset, right? It's an asset. And it's a lead magnet. You know, they're building their list as well. So building your list is also a great, um, I mean, who doesn't want to build their, their list and their names and emails? Because once you have a list of people who are, of prospects who are interested and want and need what you have, you can start to send emails text message marketing, messenger messages, chatbot messages, um, and market to those people. You know, and whatever you've got lined up in your value ladder, whether it's a course or consulting or group coaching or a mastermind or whatever it may be, software, apps, whatever, you know, you can continue to add value to their lives by providing these services and they will pay you in return. So helps you build your business. They're learning, they're gaining. It's a win-win. Absolutely, absolutely. And I want to be respectful of your time because I know that you don't have much longer. So I want to ask you one thing, mainly for my audience. If someone wants to start their book and publish it in the next 30, 60 days, what is the number one tip that you could give them? Um, I would say that the biggest, the most important thing you would do, and what we would do if, if we were saying talking to you saying, hey, this is what we want to, we might work together. Um, we would brainstorm together and you could brainstorm on your own, but I would brainstorm your ideas, put everything in your mind that you think you're, you want to put inside of this book, like every single possible thing, like this is in, in, in league with value. Think, what do I want to, mm. what, what value do I want to bring to the world? What, what, because you have to lead with value. This is not a book about, Hey, we're going to write a book and sell people stuff. No, no you won't get very far with that. We have to lead with value. So what's the most valuable thing that you could teach someone or help someone or how could you serve someone in the highest manner? Um, and what value could you bring? And make a list of all those things that you're going to share. Because a lot of people think, well, I can't give them, I can't give away the farm because then they're gonna, not going to buy anything from me. No, that is not true. And that's not the way you should be looking at it. You should be going in it with a servant's heart, a servant's attitude, lead with value always. And make a list of all the things we want to teach somebody, like all the things, like I want to make sure in this book, I teach them this, 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 this doesn't even have to be in order, but just brainstorm and make that list. And then you can take that list. Once it's out of your brain onto paper, it releases more brain, you know, waves and activity. You've got more space in your brain to like, look at it logically and go, okay, now what can I do? How would I put these ideas in order? And what would make sense? Let's put them in order, logically. Like they would do this and then they would do this and then they would do this. And do give away some of those golden nuggets. Do give value away. Um, you know, don't be like, oh, I need to hide that until they're in my coaching program. No, you need to lead with value and give value up front, 100%. Um, and then that if you have those ideas, like out of your, like, here's my idea. Here's my concept. Here's my idea, maybe for a title and a subtitle, right? And you want to make sure the title like tells people what the book is. If it doesn't, like a lot of times it's kind of creates curiosity, but then the subtitle will tell, oh, this is the seven steps to whatever. Like make sure that if I walk in Barnes and Noble and I walk past your book, am I going to know that that book's for me, right? Am I going to know you're speaking to me? Is that book intended for me? Um, that's important. Um, and then that table of contents too, people also are making a decision whether to buy a book based on the cover, based on the back cover description, and many times the table of contents or the introduction. So we want to make sure that all these ideas or chapter ideas are, are stuff that people want. You're actually solving a problem. You know, take the three biggest pain points that your audience has and make sure that you're solving those problems inside of the book. Okay, like inside of that, that list of things you're going to brainstorm, make sure you're solving what the, whatever outcome transformation result thereafter are you solving those things with your chapters and with these titles and with these these bullet points that's the most important thing because that's why they're reading it 
right? They're buying it because they want a solution to a problem. They've got these pain points and you've got a solution. Now, keep in mind, as I say, lead with value, I will also tell you the book is the what, the coaching and the consulting of the course is the how. So it, there's a fine line between how deep or granular do we go. But I think the hardest part is, Bruno, and just getting the ideas out of your head onto paper. That's the biggest thing. Wow, so much value there. I was actually taking notes. Like mm -hmm. the two biggest thing that I love was one, lead with value. We teach mm -hmm. the same thing in our program. We say sell through serving. But I like the way you say it because you say that even in advance, even before you start, you give them yes. value. Which, yes. you know, we teach a lot of content creation, of value content creation, when we teach um, how to attract the dream clients. And in reality, writing a book is a lot of value content in an organized and a structured way. Yep. So I, I, I love that. Yep. I sure. love that. So, so much value in this. Yeah. And a lot of times, honestly, we've had people come to us with lead magnets that were 30 pages long. I mean, it doesn't take much more for that to become a book, right? So why are you just having it on like a, a page as a lead magnet? You can have a book and you can, you can even publish short reads. Short reads are easy to rank inside of Amazon. So the other thing I would say to people is longer is not better. I have a lot of people that come and say, oh, I want to publish a 250 page book. Okay, first of all, where did you, where did that number come from, right? Because longer does not equate to better because in our world, people's attention spans are shorter than ever, right? There's more distractions than ever in this world today, online, everywhere, right? And so people just want to get value, tell me what it is, you know, in the shortest time frame possible, it's much like logging into a course. If I log into a course and there's 85 hour videos, I'm like, oh, 400 hours of audio. I don't have time to look through that, right? Same thing with a book. If it's this thick and I'm getting on an airplane, I'm like, I can't finish that today. I'm not buying it. You know what I mean? Because I, I don't have time. I don't have a lot of time to read, right? So I want something that's short, sweet to the point. So longer is not better. We want them to finish the book. We want them to engage with us at the end. We want them to, to, relate and when they relate when we tell stories in the book they relate and they engage they're going to make it to the end where yes we have an offer um and some of them will work with us and some of them won't but but regardless we're going to provide value they're going to join our community they're going to come into our facebook groups um and they're going to it's going to be epic because it's going to be a win-win regardless and some people come into your group and they're a client for they're in that group for six months before they become a client that's okay you know, because you're really looking at what's the lifetime value of all these people's exactly. lives that I'm impacting, right? So besides the impact you're having, I mean, you're changing. It's so cool because as a publisher, we change hundreds of lives a year, you know, but I look at all the thousands of lives that each of those books impacts. It's insane. Um, so it's like the trickle down effect, which is really cool because we're we're ultimately impacting a lot of people's lives in a massive, massive way, um, positively. So it's a fun business to be in. It is, it is. And I know that you have probably less than 10 minutes. So I want to open it up for questions. So sure. now we've got people live here, Chrissy, Lolo, Shlomo, if you have any questions and even people from Facebook, if you have any question, feel free to write it down. Uh, we have only eight minutes. So if you write it down quick, I'll be, I'll be able to read it to Chris. But let's start with people in this room. Guys, do you have any question from Chris while we have her? Yes, I do. <laughs> go, go on, Chris. I'm sure you have. <laughs> so, um, Chris, thank you for, for the info. It's really great um, to, to really hear what you're doing. Um, so can you tell me um, how you are attracting your clients? Is it through ads or how do you attract your clients? Sure. Well, last year, 60% of our clients were referred to us. Um, and it's only because we've been in the business so long. So we have a lot of big names that publish with us. And then they, people see that and they refer people and they refer people. So that's, that's organic. Obviously, that doesn't help as much. But other than that, um, we do Facebook ads and Instagram ads, mainly YouTube ads. Um, and then Facebook groups We're really active in a lot of Facebook groups. And we have a lot of people asking questions. But I'm not in there selling anything. We're just leading with value, answering questions, that sort of thing. And then people are coming to us from, from as a result of that. But mostly paid traffic. Um, LinkedIn is really amazing also. 
LinkedIn is phenomenal. Um, we get several appointments booked on our calendar a day from LinkedIn from people that we've targeted and reached out to. Um, so it's, it's, it's an incredible organic strategy, very high quality traffic. Right. Thank you. Of course. And, um, do you, do you, uh, publish down on Amazon or where do you publish? Amazon, um, Barnes and Noble, Apple, Google, um, lots of places online actually. So they're, they're going to be omnipresent when we're done. Mm -hmm. So yeah, absolutely. And we market them to bestseller. Most people want to be marketed to bestseller on Amazon. That's the biggest thing. And quite frankly, that's the biggest platform. That's the biggest audience. They rule the world when it comes to books. They beat every other every other provider out there. They, they beat them in terms of eyeballs, right? Mm -hmm. I think 300, the most recent number I heard was 300 million eyeballs a month looking for books on Amazon. So it's, it's a great <laughs> It's a great, it's free traffic. Honestly, once it's published, it's it's free traffic because there's so many people on Amazon looking for a book, you know? So yeah. okay. Um and do you offer just like one package, like people working with you? Is it one package or no, packages? No, we don't have it's it's actually multiple packages because it's so different because people not everybody fits into one box. Like we get people who just have an idea who want to publish a book who have nothing. We have people who have a book already written that hasn't been edited. We have people who have some ideas already, but haven't done anything else. And we have people who published books or self-published books who they flopped, didn't sell any books. And they come to us and go, can you help us? Can you fix it? Can you republish re it? Can you can you market it to bestseller? You know, so it really depends on where they are in the phase. And we do it like an introduction call. Um, it's not a sales call. It's just an introductory call just to learn more about their process, their idea, what they're wanting to do. And we just see if it fits into our, our model. So it's not mm. everybody does. There's probably about 15 to 20 a week we turn away. Um, but, but, you know, but for that still, we, we accept that many also. So it, it just kind of evens out, but, um, but yeah, it's just, it really is dependent upon where they are and their, and their book writing journey. Cause for some, it's just, a, it's just a dream right now. Right. So it just depends. Thank you. Sure. You bet. Awesome. And we got one question from Facebook. Okay. Alex, uh, what if no one knows me? Do you think anyone will still my, buy my book, even if I don't have any authority yet? That's I love that you put question. yet there. But I let Chris to answer that. <laughs> That's a great question. And absolutely, I would say 99%, we publish hundreds and hundreds of books a year. I will tell you 99% of those people have zero following, zero, nobody knows who they are. They're not big names, right? What's funny is, is they're selling way more books. Like the book we did last week, Brian Tracy wrote the foreword. This guy's written eight, eight books that have sold. He's, he's, made, he's made millions of dollars in book sales but he's never had never hit bestseller before, which is crazy to me. I was like, how is that even possible? Big name publisher, shocking to me, right? But um, so we we helped him. We amplified his brand mega, mega, like times a thousand in a week, right? But there are, I would say for, there's him over here, right? Maybe 1% or 2% of our clients, 90 something percent of our clients, nobody's ever heard of them. They're a coach, consultant, an entrepreneur, a business owner, and they've got, they, maybe they have a coaching business or maybe they're transitioning from a job to a coaching business or from a job to being an entrepreneur, right? Um, that sort of thing. But that's, that's the beauty of it. That's what's great is you can, to run ads, it's really hard to have credibility because they see, people see a million ads a week and they're like, yeah, yeah, I've seen that a hundred times. But when it's a book, the perceived value of the book and your knowledge, all of a sudden you have elevated authority. They're like, oh, this person wrote a book. It's a best-selling book. They must know a thing or two. It will, it will open way more doors than any paid advertisement will ever will. Exactly. So basically to add to that, especially if people don't know you, especially if you don't have the authority, book is the best way to start creating that authority and impact. <laughs> yeah, it helps those people more, to be honest with you, it, because it's like, it's, it's, it's more, you know, if the other people sometimes have some authority and credibility, it just it amplifies what they have. But people who don't have an audience, 
who don't have as many clients, or maybe you have no clients, people who don't know any, nobody knows who you are. That's actually the perfect person for a book. That person will Absolutely. get the most value from it for sure. Absolutely. Love it. So I know that you got to think three, four more minutes. So is there any final questions guys? from here or from uh, Facebook? Um, how do we get in contact with you? Good question, Chrissy. <laughs> um, you know, you can go to our, so we have a group, I'm active in it. I'm in there every day answering questions um, and my information is in there. Is that okay for me to give Bruno? I wasn't sure. Of course, yeah, that. go for it. Yeah, if you go to bookpublishingchallenge.com, so we do, we do a five-day free challenge just to introduce people to what we do, how we do that sort of thing. Um, we do it every, about every couple of months or so. Um, we, people are asking for it once a month. It's just a lot. It's a lot of work because it's five days. It's an hour a day. And we just literally go through the process, you know, our process. And it's a, but it's a lot, right, for people to consume. And if we're not holding their hand, they're kind of like, God, you know, it feels like a lot. But I will tell you this. So it's bookpublishingchallenge.com. And I will tell you something, like if someone comes in and goes through that free challenge, uh, the amount of time you need to put into it, like the table of contents call is an hour with us. The, the recording calls is three to four hours. The, after that, that's pretty much it besides you saying, hmm, what do I want my cover to look like? Like it's, it's, it's like decisions you have to make, but it's not hundreds of hours of your time. And I think that perception is, oh, it takes hours and it takes months to write a book. Not at all. Not at all. I mean, we'll go as fast as you go. Like the, the guy that did it nine days was like, let's go. Let's do my table of contents call today. My recording call is tomorrow. Edit, edit, edit. We did the cover in the funnel while it was being edited. Voila, right? But, but usually it's, it's not us. If it's going slower, it's not us slowing it down. But I can show you to go how fast, however fast you want to go. Um, that's how fast we can go. But, but that challenge is a great free introduction to who we are, what we do. You you register and then you join the Facebook group. And that's, I'm in there every day, all day. I also have chriscolley.com, my name. Um, and that doesn't lead to like, I think the challenge link is on there, but that's just my, if you want to learn more about what we do or how we do. Um, but we've been serving clients at this level for over 20 years. Um, and our real, our real specialty, what we're really amazing at is serving entrepreneurs, coaches, and consultants. You know, people that are just having an impact or making it having an want to have more influence, but have an impact um, and are out there serving the world in some way. That's where we shine. So, um, so yeah, it's it's fun. It's a super fun. And some people, you might have a job and go, you know what? I want to transition out of my job as a CPA and I want to teach other CPAs how to do this or that. Right? That's a perfect person too, because um, a lot of people feel stuck. Like, well, I'm in, I'm working full time. I'm this. I'm that. My you can write a book and make your way out and consult, right? Or coach or have a course, you know, spread your knowledge um, to other CPAs or other doctors or other nurses or ever, whatever, you know? And sometimes people think they don't have a big enough purpose. Like I had a gal once say to me, well, I'm just a mom. And I was like, that's kind of a, a lame statement. What do you mean? You're just a mom. I'm just a mom too, you know, but, but like, but she was, but she was a homeschool mom. And what came out of that conversation was, she had been homeschooling her kids and they had they had been getting scholarships at Harvard and all these, these Ivy League big schools, but she's teaching other parents how to homeschool their kids successfully. And I was like, that's genius, right? There's a lot of people who want that, Absolutely. right? But sometimes that we get in our own way and we don't even realize our own value or what we have. And everybody's got some God-given talent or gift or knowledge up here. You just have to kind of think about it. <laughs> sometimes it's just someone pulling it out of you, Bruno. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> love it. Love it. Thank you so much, Chris. I know that you have a hard stop in one minute. So I want to be respectful of your time. Super powerful session. Lot of value. I'm also going to join your book challenge because I'm planning to publish my book in the next couple of months. <laughs> awesome. We love that. Okay. Love Thank you again for Happy everything. Yep. Awesome. Thank you for having Thank me. I really much. enjoyed it. Love sharing, love giving value. And uh, yeah, I really appreciate it. Hopefully I'll see some of you inside the group and we can chat and you can ask questions and um, yeah, if I can serve it or help in any way, I'm happy to do so. Awesome. Yes, we'll see you inside the group for sure. Thank you again awesome. very much, Chrissy, and enjoy your afternoon. You got it. Same to you guys. Thank All you right. very much. Bye-bye.